Welcome to Creative Bar. Hey, hey. This week we're talking about life before the internet. There was life before the internet? Apparently so. We were brought up in an age where the internet has relatively always existed. Um, we were born, for me, I was born in 1994, you were born in... 95. 95, there's one year's difference there. And we're going to be discussing today, in a more formal fashion on Creative Bar, life before the internet. Now the only people that I really know of who know of life before the internet that I'm close to are my parents. Now without disclosing their names, they're not that old, but they were around well before the internet was created. And I don't mean like, you know, when the internet went national and stuff. Mm. They were around when the internet was actually never made, as in like before the first transmission. It's crazy. Because yeah, because we were just doing some research and there was transfer between computers, but it was through like different programming and stuff, but the actual internet internet was what what to say 1990 in the around 1990s the internet took on a more recognizable form oh. so it was like that the internet was actually um hate you know html5 that mm. website with christian things on it uh-huh. you know the fish stickers on the website that's when the uh, internet took a more recognizable form i remember when i was probably about 8 or 9 getting uh, the internet in the house for the first time Wow. Yeah. Crazy, isn't it? But you see, the internet is actually, if we're going to go down to basics with the internet, it's two files transferring or someone transferring a command to another computer and then that coming back. And we do that through the telephone line exchange Mm. over here. And that is what the internet's all about. That's how we get YouTube and stuff. But I've been excited to sort of think, I was thinking, what am I going to do for Creative Bar this week? And I was like, well, we couldn't do Creative Bar without the internet. That's so true. There's so many things you couldn't do without the internet. And Not I, just emails and stuff, yeah. like everything. What about, everything. Ne- what about Netflix? Netflix and chill. Netflix and chill. But uh, yeah, the, <laughs> the internet was created, and I don't know why it was created, I don't know what they saw in it, but it, it was probably... The most worldwide and fascinating and creative invention mm. ever because now we do everything on it. I got, I'm going to give you some information that I've got on my laptop over here if I can reach it. It might cover up near me a little bit, but we're all right. So on the history.com website, it says that uh, the online world took on a more recognizable form in 1990 when computer scientist Tom Berners Lee invented the World Wide Web, while it's often confused with the internet itself. The web is actually just the most common means of accessing data online in the form of websites and hyperlinks. The web helped popularize the internet among the public and served a crucial step in developing the vast trove of information that most of us now access on a daily basis. So the internet is basically information. Mm. Is that what it's saying? Yeah. I guess it's what it's saying. But what I don't still don't understand, because obviously there wasn't any like 3G or 4G or anything like that. No, there. there's not even Wi-Fi near me. So... Wi-Fi. Did they just use like dial-up? Did it all have to connect? And go, ree, 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 well, the internet ree, isn't like ree. the way that you saw it. That's, only, that's World Wide Web. Like, so the internet, basically, what it's saying is... Right, so let's put it this way. If I had a computer here and a computer mm-hmm. over there, if it was, like, communicating with each other, the computer, that's still an internet. Yeah. Because it's communicating, isn't it? Your, your dial-up and stuff was, like, the booster to communicate to another computer. Right, anyway, I see. Have you ever heard of a thing called a server? A server is, like, another computer. Like a Minecraft server? Like a Minecraft server. I know a Minecraft server. It's like a computer. <laughs> you need a computer to host that. right. Excuse me, you need a computer to host that in order for the information to be retrieved. But before the life of the internet, you know, I, I, I like Naomi, remember the day that my dad brought a computer home and then the internet was there. And then I remember the day. Magical day. day. AOL. (laughs) That's what I was allowed. AOL. (laughs) And you go in the chat room. And you go, well, I was never allowed in the chat rooms. No, well, I wouldn't suggest. Don't go in chat rooms, kids. Like, I don't know how any parent let them on chat rooms, as in, like. It was the kids. One. Oh, the Monitors. kids were alright. Monitored kids were, <laughs> that's fine, yeah. It's like chat rooms, mm, bit, 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 you know, I wouldn't dare go and there on was that. a squirrel Still, game. A squirrel game. Called Sk- we're talking about life before Sorry, the internet. We're talking about life before the internet. Now, you see, 
what I struggle with is I with me and we do a bit of youth work on the side, a bit of youth work on the on side. The side. And uh, well, we hang out with some of you from our church, right? And they're always on their phones. And you know, with us, when we went to school, there's like Facebook on a computer at home, so you had to have a computer at home. But that was uh, mainly for old people then. It was mainly for, no, it was mainly for university students. You said it was for old people, but there was no way we could ever get on Facebook in school. No. Or there was no way we could ever go on social media platforms in school. We could text each other and play which, snake. And play Snake, right? We could do that. We could taste your room, play Snake. And there was no touchscreen phones, really. They were really bad if and they were. And then it was your Blackberries. Then it was the Blackberries, right? And that's where it came, and that's where it kicked off, the, mm-hmm. the, the sort of instant messaging. There was MSN at home, and that was like the Facebook of the day. Will asked me out on MSN. I did ask Nero me out on MSN. The internet 2007. Started. Do you want to go out with me? Yes. Um, emojis, emo- emoticons. I think I broke up with you on MSN as well, Probably. to be honest. I did. Horrible bye. I did. Horrible bye. I did. The internet is not a good thing. I felt so satisfying. I'm kidding. That's That's a horrible thing. It is so mean. The internet will be really mean to you now. No, they won't. They will. See, even even nowadays, we just, we use it in conversation, don't you? Like the internet. The internet is like an audience, isn't it? Is a group of people. We're sort of rambling here. We're not going on anywhere. Sorry. Yeah. So, dungarees, life before internet. Dungarees? That's what people are. All right. So, life before the internet, what do people do? What, what, like, I can't even imagine, like, my job before the internet. And I'm a logo designer. How did we, how did I get noticed? How would I ever have gotten noticed? Right, no, this is a cool, cool, fascinating story. Right, not a cool, fascinating story. But for anyone who knows my channel and stuff, right, for my business and stuff with logo design and YouTube and that, because this is sort of my job as well, it's on the internet, and I remember telling my college tutor, you know, there is a way that we can have a sustainable business plan through the internet because of the free marketing potential that it is. Like, and it is. The internet is basically free marketing. When you get onto Facebook, free, free, free. You can pay for little web add-ons. Space. Like web space and stuff. That might not be free. Like my websites yeah. aren't free, but it's very, very cheap. And that's the idea behind it. And I remember people thinking that, you know, people getting paid on YouTube, like even nowadays, they're like, whoa, that's ludicrous. Whoa, how do people get paid on YouTube and all this? I still don't really understand. Yeah, well, no one <laughs> does. But like um, people get like, whoa, this is really strange. But I remember telling my tutor this or one of the tutors at college, and they were like, no, no, it's, it's never going to be as sustainable. But in fact, the internet has made it more sustainable. Like, there's always a guarantee of pay. Like, if you are on the internet and you have a laptop that can at least code something in Notepad or something, you can make money off that. So money nowadays, entrepreneurially, entrepreneurially, is that entrepreneurially we can actually make more money than we've ever had before and easier because we've got access to all these things and the government have schemes where you can get a computer from them Mm. it's crazy if you think if you think though if you were a small business or even just any business back in you know the 70s yeah everything would have been paper-based like it would have been photocopying filing you know, mailing stuff rather than just quick instant email, send it, it's done. They did have fax reply. machines though. Fax, yeah, there's fax machines. They were yeah. popular for a couple of years. Weren't Still they? are popular. Yeah, for old people. No, I got <laughs> I got an email just a few minutes ago of a company that like, if I wanted to, I could fax them. They had a fax number. I think Church has a fax machine. I don't understand them. I don't know why I would need them. If you're using fax machines... Stop you need to it. get an iPhone so I can send Naughty. you a fa- like an image or something. But anyway, the internet, before it's time, like I, I don't know before it's time because all I did was play Flight Simulator and Train Simulator because I, I, was, I was the coolest kid on the block, right? <laughs> but when it comes down to it, is I can only remember before the phone age and now everyone at school has phones and like college that... C- are just computers in your pocket they literally are and it makes me wonder what will be the next thing I think it'll be like holograms well there are things of that there's like uh, watches um, no these bands that go into your hand that turn into a phone I don't know if that was a gimmick but like it's not real it is I've seen that you tell me all things that aren't real that is real like people have actually done like funding on that arm phones arm phones yeah Yeah, I'll have to put the link in the description somewhere where I found At it. At least with that, though, it'll be like being back in the in the 90s where you could just push someone in a pool and well, not worry well, about the phone. Well, yeah. Arm but, phones. 
You know, nowadays you have to pay for it. But uh, that's the thing about the internet. Like, you literally have this really thin device. You can take a picture anywhere in the world and you can post it up on social media. If you've got a large enough following, then pe- all people from wherever you are in the world can see that. And you can see all over the world. This I could go on my crazy. phone now and in less than 30 seconds I could get a picture of the Eiffel Tower up. How today. would you pitch, how would you explain the internet to someone who's never seen it before? How, I don't know, how would you? Is that a hard question? It's like a world in the air that you can get on a screen. Yeah, and that's another thing. If, if I was to explain 100 years ago, no more than that, 200 years ago, about my job, I work in front of a computer a lot. Well, what's a computer? Yeah, what's a computer? Well, I draw on a computer, why would you draw I on a computer? A, no, the literal <laughs> thing that I can only imagine saying, and I've gone through it in my head a couple of times, is I sit in front of a box and I'm then Draw running. on the box. Yeah, I draw on the box and I do a lot of these commands into this box and somehow I'm able to communicate with someone. The internet is really weird when you think about it. We all take it for granted. But now we do, but then when it crashes, we're like, what do we do? Yeah, what I know. What do we do? We had a power cut on Saturday. Yeah. It was like, what do we do? I was all right. I <laughs> do remember, we talk to each other? <laughs> I remember when the office here, like, um, we've got super fast internet speeds here, right? And that's because my YouTube videos and all, all my work stuff, like, you don't want to spend ages uploading things. So we've got this really good internet. And, you know, what? even when it slows down a bit, it's so frustrating. But when it shut off, it was like, my, not just my, like, daily routine ended. <laughs> it's not just like my, my brain shut down. It was sort of like my work shut down as well. Like, there was still communication. Obviously, I can... And this is a really weird thing. I can get actual Wi-Fi off my phone. Like, that's another strange thing. That is weird. Uh, I can hook it up to I my can't laptop even get or my Mac. <laughs> so when my internet fell, went off here, um, it was like all hell broke loose in my office because I was like, I don't know what I can do for the next five days, which is how long it was going to take. Um, and now we've got 3G on our phone, so nearly anywhere we can go, and 4G and 5G in China, it's no matter bad. where we go, we have like all this information. And not only that, right? We can talk to our phone and it will automatically go on the internet and search for something. Yeah, that is weird. Here's something I want to show you guys. I know this is, episode's taking a long time, Jimmy, but like, we've got to do it. Wolfram Snorlax. Watch this. This is Siri. Let me think about that. Okay, check it out. It's a Pokedex. It's a Pokedex. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed watching. No, no, I mean, look, it's a Pokedex. <laughs> Why are you doing that? Everyone on here will be buzzing about this. They probably never knew that you get a Pokedex on Siri. Seriously, I can't show you very well, but there you go. There's, like, chat. Do you remember when Pokemon was cards? Physical characteristics, species, sleeping Pokemon. Leave it in the height, comments 6, below. 11. Proportions of females, 12.5%. Proportion of males, 87. Where does this come from? See you next time. This is everything. Anyway, thank you so much for watching <laughs> Creative Bar this week. We've got only a couple more episodes until we conclude. We're going to conclude our first season series. Season one. Oh, yeah, so season one. Like a Netflix series. And then there'll be a four-week gap. Roughly four weeks. We might have a four week gap. It might be two weeks, it might be four. Let's see how we go. During this time, things will change. So I always do plugs at the end. It's Everyone okay. should know. This is when the music goes Dan, on. Dan, you can put so many plugs in, that's totally fine. Yeah, I, I gave a Pokedex on my phone a plug in, but here we go. I'm going to be changing this up a tiny bit. So things will look nicer afterwards. And it should be a bit more flashier, this. Flashy. So flashier. I like flashies. You like flashiers things. But not flashes. Flashes. No, we don't yeah. we don't deal with flashes mm. on this show. But anyway, yeah, that's that's what's gonna happen. This this thing, you guys really like this whole idea of creative bar. So we're gonna carry on doing it. It's gonna be fun. And it's gonna be fun. So thank you so much for watching Creative Bar. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. See you next week. <laughs>